I was actually, it's actually nice. It's different. I'll see you guys in Colombia. But bitch, I'm ready to get naked again. So, yeah. Congratulations, two months, no cigarettes. Weed speeds up the metabolism. I think what it is is like if you smoke throughout the day and you eat like tiny little meals, because I mean, obviously you get hungry when you smoke weed, <clears throat> but it's all about portion control. It's about like not overindulging when you're eating and knowing that like you get hungry and an hour from now or two hours from now, you can have a little something else, but you don't have to like overdo it to the point you make yourself um, exhausted or overwhelmed or whatever. And that's usually what works with me is like eating like a little bit throughout the day. Cause that's what really keeps your metabolism going. And, um, and drinking water like only drinking water no soda none of it like you cannot drink soda you can't really have anything like water <clears throat> is what we need you don't need anything else but water and you want to drink your weight in ounces every day I'm over here giving all this <laughs> health advice but like that's really what you want to do you 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 will see a major change in, um, in your, in your body and the way that you react to things. And I used to wake up all like hurting and groggy and stuff in the mornings. And I will say that since I changed my diet and not drinking soda and things like that, um, I'm just trying to keep it more natural foods and instead of a lot of preservatives and things like that, I, I'm feeling a hundred percent better again i'm feeling like myself when i look in the mirror i'm seeing who i recognize for the most part um the gym is something i have to get, <laughs> i have to get used to getting back into because i don't know like i i love going to do gymnastics but as far as like working out in a gym sometimes that can be I don't know. It's a it's a little much, especially because I have a deviated septum, which means I can't breathe really well through my nose, and it just makes it extra harder for me to um, work out. I get exhausted easily because you have to breathe when you work out. It's all about breathing and and con you know breath control and stuff like that. And when when you're not able to use your your nose properly, like it just makes it really hard. <laughs> Mm. what do I think about UK versus the world let me tell you what I think um it is it was a shocker I will not spoil anything it was absolutely shocking <clears throat> it was it was good it was different um I mean, it was different, but it was also familiar at the same time. I, there were a lot of things that I like. I feel like they, they must have filmed it a while ago. It, for some reason, it, it seems like it should have come out sooner. I don't know if you guys get that vibe. I feel like it should have came out before Queen of the Universe. I'm just, I'm just saying, I didn't, it don't, it doesn't seem rushed. It just seems like it was, it was put out a little bit later than it should have. It should have, it should have came out already. I feel like, I don't know. You enjoyed seeing me on TV. That's incredible. Thank you. I don't think they filmed it before the pandemic, so I don't know if it could have come out. Get 
Okay, <clears throat> Jujubee is on everything that that Drag Race puts out. She's been on. Uh, she's been on everything. They love her, and I love her too. So it's cool. I'm watching uh, Beverly Hills Troop. Troop Beverly Hills, sorry, I'm dyslexic. Um, I haven't decided who I'm rooting for on um, UK versus the world. I don't know yet. I need to see. I really like Lemon a lot. So I was, spoiler alert, if you don't want to know what happened on UK versus the world, please exit right now because in three, two, one. I was really devastated. Well, not devastated. That's really dramatic. <laughs> I was gagged at who got sent home. Um, I did not see that coming. I wasn't even sure that person should have been in the bottom, per se. And yellow is my favorite color. So, and I know Lemon wears yellow and everything. And so I was like really... It, really made me sad to see her go because like she's a fierce queen she looked really pretty for the runway I thought her her like talent or whatever was it was good it could have there are things about it that could have been better but like I don't think it was the worst honestly <clears throat> I don't think it was the worst anyway Yeah, but, you know, like, it's, it's, you know, like, uh, Pangina, she, she was close with, uh, the other queen, and honestly, it's probably a really hard decision. She probably didn't know Lemon that well, and... She won, so Lemon had to go. But the good thing about it is, is like, Lemon wasn't horrible when she left, so people are going to still love her and give her love and support. So just because we don't get to see her to the end doesn't mean that we're not, that we won't love her any less. You know what I mean? <gasps> No, me be. I miss you. Not the other queen. I'm sorry. I just didn't want to mess up her name. What is it? J Jenny Jackie. I'm sorry. I'm really bad with names. <laughs> so bad with names. I really am. That's why I said the other queen. She was the one that I didn't remember the name that well. I don't know if I said it right. It's Jackie or J Jenny. Jenny, Jackie, I don't know. Whatever. Don't judge me. There's a bazillion fucking drag race queens now. Like, it's... It's insane. Jimbo's performance was... Um... Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Jenny Jackie. Yes. I think I said that right, didn't I? I just didn't want to mess her name up. And that, and that's... It wasn't that I forgot her name. It was that, like, I wasn't sure how to say it. So there we go. 
Kylie, do you know Pablo Vitar? Um, I do not know them personally, but I know who Pablo is, and I think they are fierce. Why would you ask me if I like Miley Cyrus? No, I don't like Miley Cyrus. I love Miley Cyrus. I did mess up the name. There we go. I don't know. I don't like... On the first episode, I don't think anybody should go home, honestly. Honestly, I don't I don't think anybody should go home on the first episode of anything. I think it's like that's everyone's chance to kind of get in there and get and show who they are and get somewhat comfortable, you know? Cuz sometimes you have a a bad start, you know? Sometimes the energy is off and all of that shit. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> Opinions on the fashion. I just, uh, I'm not really gagging over anybody's fashion. Period. I'm, I'm, I mean, that's just my opinion. I haven't seen anything yet. I mean, I did love Jimbo's runway, but the makeup was... The makeup was a little... It could have been better. Like, we could have got a white eyebrow or something. The lip could have been more clean. But I don't know if that's the look that she was going for. But for me... Um, like, I think she had the best look. Now... When she had to perform in that look, it was really sad because she couldn't even walk in her shoes, which really sucks. And she probably could have saved her friend, Lemon. <laughs> but we don't know if she had uh, Lemon's lipstick or not. But I knew Miss Singh was going to pick Lemon before she pulled it out of her titty because I could see the Canadian flag. The met through the mesh and her top, and I was like, no. It really my it's like no. She, um, she wasn't in blackface. That's that's not what blackface is. Her face was painted black, but she wasn't in blackface. There's a di there's a difference. I mean, obviously, she was not trying to pretend to be a person of color there, there's a difference we can't we can't we can't throw words like that out be, uh, like we can't just say things like that because th those words are really um, serious and there's a difference between what Jimbo did and somebody who's doing blackface is doing. So just be very careful with how you how you word things because I don't think it's um, the right thing to say. Oh my God, I miss you too, baby. I love Lady Gaga. My dog is good. Oh my God, Matthew. Hi, Matt. I get to see you soon. What am I working on? Oh my God, you guys have no idea. <clears throat> I know it might seem like I'm just kind of like not doing anything, but I've done things and things are happening. And, you know, it's... I ha okay, so let me tell you what was supposed to happen. Okay, I was supposed to go on a tour through Canada, 
at the beginning of the year, but because of the restrictions on how many people can be, like, I think it was like half capacity could go into venues. So we postponed a lot of my Canada tour to the summer, which I'm okay with. And, um, so I pretty much been off all of January. I had a gig. Um, I had a gig and January. I'm also doing, I'm going to Colombia in February. So I'm doing one gig in, in February. Um, and I may pick up some stuff here and there, but I had taken time off because I was going to have surgeries done like FFS. It's called facial feminization surgery. It's part of, uh, transitioning. It's part of, uh, the transition that I wanted to go through and is juice box in here. Um, and yeah, and that didn't happen. Um, apparently the waiting list for FFS from the doctors I want is anywhere from a year to two years away. And I'm honestly, I've waited almost 20 years since I started my transition. Like, well, not since I started my transition, but I knew by the time I was like 17, 18, like how I felt. And once I realized that like, it was possible to actually transition and live my life the way I felt was most comfortable for me. I had been wanting these surgeries, you know, and, and, um, and as you get older and you develop more and things like that, it just becomes more of an insecurity. So now I finally have the money to get pay for the surgeries. But now the waiting list is forever. So apparently, I guess everybody is transgender now. <laughs> and everybody is getting all the, all the surgeries. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've waited my whole life, or at least m more than half of my life, to get the surgery done. And, and now I um, apparently will have to wait longer for it. But... <sighs> <clears throat> hopefully I'm, I'm hoping maybe my people can reach out to a doctor that I like and, and explain like what's happening and try to like get me in there sooner. Honestly, like, cause my schedule is like absolutely crazy, you know, like traveling and just really not any time to do anything for myself personally. You know, and that's what I want to do. So hopefully we'll see what happens. But okay, I haven't. I have not even smoked weed this morning. But any tips for a baby drag queen like myself? <clears throat> Um, oh, you know what? I, okay, a tip. Like, are you, like, what kind of drag queen are you? Like, do you, are you a performer? Are you, like, um, like a makeup queen? Are you, like, what kind of queen are you? Like, I don't know. I'm, like, I'm like a showgirl. So I perform on stage and stuff like that. And so, like, for me, when I'm watching queens perform on stage... I think um, it's about stage presence. It's about connecting with the audience. And I do find like a lot of young queens don't really try to, not, I'm, not all of them, but I've noticed like a great handful of queens, they don't really connect with their audience. They just come out and do as many stunts as possible in hopes that like, you know, the crowd goes crazy in which the crowd will, but like, you really will make an impact on the audience if you're able to connect with them and take your time when you're on stage. I think a lot of times girls come on stage and they rush, they pull their reveal off like within the first few seconds of coming on stage and I think that's 
absolutely awful. <clears throat> it's like, what's the point? You know, like, like give it a minute. And if there's going to be a reveal, make it be something fabulous. Make it be something that like people aren't really expecting. Um, <clears throat> I think that's great. You know, let's see what else could I give advice to a baby queen? Um, if you work somewhere and they like you, like I say, you know, when you're, when you're young and you're trying to get into it, sometimes you have to, sometimes you do work for free. Sometimes you work for tips only. But I think if they ask you to come back and they like you, then they should pay you to be there because that's only fair. You like the job that I did. You wanted me to come back and work again. Pay me. You know, drag is not cheap. It's, it's very expensive. Um, but hold on. What is going on here? the fuck uh, um what in the hell what am i reading honey go on somewhere with that that is disgusting okay so another thing is somebody said they're a new queen and they don't know how to do splits or death drops that is not an, a requirement to being a good drag queen um I think, I think that stuff is great if you can do it, if you want to do it, that's one thing. But if it, like, you don't have to do it to, like, it's not a requirement. It doesn't be like, can you do a death drop? Check. Can you do a split? Check. Like, you don't have, you don't have to do that. Like, I remember when I performed in Atlanta, when I first moved to Atlanta, I was one of the first, I, not the first, I was one of very few queens that were acrobatic on stage like a lot of girls would not do flips and dips and splits um occasionally you would uh, get a queen that would split but usually usually when i was in a show there was not very many people who were doing splits and flips you know it was i was kind of like in my own lane, which was great. And even before Drag Race, I, I would go, I would get booked out of town, which was crazy for somebody who never won a pageant, never been on, you know, TV or whatever at that time. I would get booked out of town. I would, I would get, because of my skill, my gymnastics skill, it was really, really cool. <clears throat> Who are your favorite pop divas? <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> I feel like people who know me should already know who my favorite pop divas are. But I will tell you, <clears throat> um, I love Pink. <sighs> who else do I love? Beyonce. Um, Britney Spears. Christina Aguilera. Mm. When I think of pop divas, I think of like a more all around, like can sing and dance sort of thing. Um, I mean, there's, there's honestly, there's so many, there's so many that I like. Oh, Madonna for sure. Okay, you guys look. Amy, I love Amy Winehouse. She's not a dancer. She's, she's a vocalist. I love Amy Winehouse though. What? I have not lived in in Atlanta for over 12 years. 
I think it's been like no, 11 years. I think it's been 11 years. Mm. Almost 12. Oh my God. I forgot it's year 2022. Fucking A. I was trying to remember how old I was turning this year. Because I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Did, has, it's, it's insane. Love Kylie Minogue. That's where my name comes from, Kylie. I'm coming to the UK. Yes, I am. Since winning, have I felt happier than ever? Um, I've definitely felt happy because I've accomplished things, but, um, the thing about, uh, filming the show was like, for me, ha the, the thing about winning, that's not what made me happy because I can't focus on like winning being what controls my emotions. I'm grateful for it. Um, but as far as like being happier since I won, um, I'm, I, I'll say I'm grateful, but I have, I, I wouldn't say that it made me happier, but I'm grateful. Um, my happiness comes from other places and, um, I have kind of been going through a lot of like, I've been going through it, honestly. Um, so I'm just, I just been trying to focus on my mental health. And because that's something that I kind of avoided because it's just like, go, 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 gig, 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 no sleep, you know, and, and it sometimes gets really overwhelming. And like, like I said, I'm so grateful for it, but, um, winning, winning is not what gives me happiness, um, pushing myself to be the best version of myself and surrounding myself with people who who inspire me, who believe in what I'm doing, who I believe in what they're doing, people who have good energy. Those, those are the things that, that bring me happiness. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I think it's I think it's super important that that we all like really try to protect the energy that we have around us and like hey flame um like you can't just hang out with anybody like you have you got to protect your energy and um and that's one thing that I've learned is like when you get older, you kind of trim off friends um, because there are people who are like real friends to you and then there are people who are just friendly when they're around you. And I think it's super important to know the difference and those people who are just friendly when they're around you and they don't really reach out or they don't, they're not really invested in who you are. Um, I think... I think we have to not give our ourselves too much to those people. We we know like when we're around certain people if if we're able to share space and energy with those people. I don't know cuz it can drain you and and I'm I don't know. I just I'm just way more protective over <laughs> who I have around me cuz some people can drain drain your energy from you. If I'm around anybody who exhausts me when they talk or everything is like super dramatic or whatever, or it makes me feel overwhelmed. I'll try to remove myself.
because that's just me protecting my mental health. I thought I see my friend James in here. I did see him in here. I know I seen him in here. Anyway, if you're still in here, I love you. Not Harriet Tubman is in here. <clears throat> um, you know what? I think I, I think sometimes, uh, like things about me that I don't like, um, is I I tend to when I when I get myself in around certain energy and stuff like that. And it makes me feel uncomfortable and I force myself self to stay around it. I tend to like bottle up my emotions and and at some point like they come out and and I hear and feel a side of me that like makes me feel really uncomfortable where like I I get I wanna say ang angry <laughs> and very passionate are like super frustrated and I'll go from angel to asshole in like no time. <clears throat> what is going on here? going on okay there's somebody in here that that needs a timeout let's do this let's let's do this can we add can we add somebody to this conversation I've invited somebody to join me. Look. My dear Kylie, I'm so I am like, I am desperate because, you know, I've seen, I'm, I'm dr I've dreamed with you today and it, you were like one of my biggest idols and you were representative and everything. But within three years, you're going to die from a very, very heavy cancer and I have this kind of visions, but go to the doctor now to check. Go now and make a checkup now, as soon as possible. I guarantee you, do it for me. I love you for all your funds. Thank you very much. I love you. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to die from cancer. That was really crazy. No. There it is. There it is. There it is. So, <laughs> there it is. So am I supposed to go to the doctor now and be afraid? Listen, let me tell you something. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to live and I'm not afraid to die. I will tell you those two things right now. I will live my life to the fullest and I will live my life to the day I die. I'm not afraid to live and I'm not afraid to die. It's going to happen to all of us. Um, but there is, um, there's, hey, listen, I will definitely, I'm not going to block them. I think I'm not going to block them. If they really felt that in their heart and they felt like they wanted to tell me that, then, then I appreciate it. Now, is it uncomfortable? Yes. Um, but hey, it could be right, but could be wrong. 
thank you. I appreciate you telling me that. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it is, I, I, it's not what I expected, you know. <clears throat> no, I mean, listen, I, I've definitely, I've definitely had moments where I felt like, you know, I go to the doctor and I get checked up and things like that and, um, and nothing is wrong and everything checks out okay. But there have been times where I'm like, I just don't feel like, I don't know. I was just saying this the other day. Like, sometimes you feel like you might not know more than the doctors do. Or like, I don't know. Anyway, um, there's nothing wrong with, with going to get that checked out. Oh my God, Janet Jackson. I wanted to watch that. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I'm trying to read. <laughs> I'm trying to read you guys' um Oh, they want me to pay for a lifetime, bitch. I've got way too much subscriptions, girl. I'm gonna have to wait for Janet. <clears throat> okay, I'm coming back. Okay, so if you're just joining in, someone was like saying all kinds of crazy stuff in the comments. I said, oh, okay, let's add them. Let's let's talk to them. Let's see what they have to say. They immediately told me how much they love me and that that <clears throat> I'm gonna die of cancer in three years. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> That I'm going to die of cancer in three years. <clears throat> that really sucks to hear that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if they're like a psychic or whatever. Um, <clears throat> sorry, let me get some water. But if they felt that on their heart to tell me that, then you're an you're 83 year old opera singer. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> I'm stretching. <clears throat> okay, so I'm back. And they told me I need to go to the doctor and get checked out. Because, okay, so where's, where is, where is the... Where is the, um, sorry, I'm, I quit smoking like almost two weeks ago. So my body is trying to heal itself. So that's why I'm coughing. No, I don't have coronavirus. <clears throat> oh, I went, I went live with somebody and they told me that I was going to die of cancer in three years. Um, in front of everyone. So it was a little crazy. Not going to lie. Any updates on your book? Um, honestly, let me tell you, um, I, I was supposed to be in during this time to, start writing it and everything like that. And I have to be honest with you. I've just been focusing on my mental health. I don't think that I've been in a, a good place mentally to even focus on a book. I've just been trying to focus on my mental health right now so that I'm able to, to get the book going the way that I would really like to. Um, <clears throat> I'd even like to not only do a book about, you know, a, a self-help book and also about my life, but also would like to do a, a children's book. <clears throat> I would like to do a children's book. Um, so, yeah. Are 
are me and Miley going to collab again? Um, soon, I hope. Like, we've talked about it. Doing, I mean, yeah, like, I would love to. If, whenever, you know, if she needs me, I'll be there. And, oh, Mayhem didn't enter the chat room. Congratulations on quitting smoking. I'm right there with you. We've quit. Um, Mayhem, somebody told me I was going to die of cancer in three days. Or not three days, three years. I'm not going to go live anymore with you. I'm sorry. I appreciate you. Um, but I'm not going to go live with somebody that does not show their face. Um, yes. <clears throat> I just think that's fair. If you can, see, if you get to see me, I want to get to see you. Period. That's why we don't talk to strangers. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I feel that. <clears throat> I'm trying not to, but... You old and ugly and don't want to expose yourself today. Bitch, I'm old and ugly and don't want to expose myself. I'm wearing a shirt with holes all in it. My roots are showing. I My eyebrow, I don't know what this eyebrow is doing. I got fucking bags under... I look crazy, you know, bitch, I just roll out of the bed. You can't be worse than me. And if you are, so what? <clears throat> I'm so excited about Columbia. Justice for Lemon. Okay, anyway, you guys. My, I haven't even brushed my teeth today. Speaking of teeth, I'm getting veneers. I'm getting all new teeth. I sure am. In just, I think almost in a week. I'm really excited about it. I am. Do you go to therapy? No, but I need to after getting on social media. I used to not have, I used to not ever think that, I mean, I don't know. I think some people go to social media for their therapy, but <clears throat> I think therapy is something that you have to do away from everybody. I mean, I'm sure that there are things about being on social media that are therapeutic, but there are also things about being on social media that cause problems that you need therapy for. Um, <clears throat> I think when I'm, for me, the things that are therapeutic for me are writing, are um, creating, being being artistic or crafty, things like that. That's That's very therapeutic for me. And I just have not been in a mental space where I feel like I'm able to focus on those things and um you know like I was saying like I'm so grateful for everything you know but like when you're just one person and you're one person that a lot of people like you know are looking toward for like answers or or energy or or whatever and sometimes you know when you're going and going and going and going like you're not getting to sleep you're kind of just you become like this robot and then at some point you realize oh my god like I can't I can't function this way <laughs> and and still somewhat have a normal point of view you know it's just 
It's really crazy. So I definitely have been, what does this want to be on our next wake stop? Yes, I would love to be on wake stop. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> I just think like you really have to take care of your mental health. Like, it's so important. Okay, apparently I've been on Instagram for three hours and five minutes, which I don't think so. I woke up, I don't, there's no way I've been on Instagram for over three hours. There's no way. <clears throat> well, I will let you guys know when I when I come back from a doctor to get checked out, um, you know, so we'll see what happens. <clears throat> hopefully, hopefully what that person says is not true. You know, telling somebody they're going to die in three years of cancer is, is not, you know, uh, it's not great. Trinity, oh my God, happy birthday. Happy belated birthday, Trinity K. Bonet. Was that my sister, TKB? No, that's not her. Sorry, that's somebody with her name. Oh, I gotta get these roots done. It's so crazy. I'm not wearing a dress. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to get off of here. I think I've had a little bit too much for today. Um, I'm going to get myself together and go do some stuff for myself today. I love y'all. Hey Cara. Miss Cavalli, my gorgeous 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 girl from Orlando, Florida. Y'all check her out. She's everything. Fantasia Lamour. Oh my God. I love you, Fantasia. I miss you. <clears throat> you guys are great. Um, now, I, I want to say this too. Like, I, I do have cameo and I will say um... I have not been good at making the videos for it because um, I get overwhelmed when I make the videos and I overthink it and I think it's not good enough and things like that. And, um, and it just, it gives me like all this crazy anxiety. But like I was saying, I'm like, I'm trying to focus on my mental health <clears throat> and once I get into a better place, I will do the cameos full force. I just want to be able to give the cameo that that I think that they the people that are getting them deserve. Um, so they're there, and I would like to I would like to start doing cameos again. I love you guys. Y'all be good. I'll talk to you soon.